Hello everyone and welcome to the first video in my new workshop. As you can see it doesn't look like much of a workshop right now but that's going to change over the next few episodes. So let's jump into today's video and get started. This episode of The Workbench is brought to you by American Green Lights and its Performalux line of LED lighting. Visit them today for all of your energy efficient lighting needs at AmericanGreenLights.com. As many of you know, I moved into a new home at the beginning of the year. And uh, with that home came a two-car garage. And I worked it out with my significant other so that I can turn this whole garage into my new woodworking space slash maker studio. So uh, the first thing I need to tackle is the lighting. As you can tell, the corners are really dark and that's because there's only a single light in the middle of the garage with a floodlight in the middle. So uh, it's not very bright, it's very directional, and it's just not good at all. So uh, I've been looking at different options on how to light this and I finally hooked up with a company called American Green Light. American Green Light manufactures LED shop lights and other commercial grade lighting products. And uh, after a couple emails back and forth between me and one of their representatives, we came to an agreement that they would sponsor this show. So um, what's going to happen today is I'm going to show you uh, what their products are, then I'm going to install the lighting and run some wiring, stuff like that. And when it's over, we'll have a brand new lit shop. American Green Lights had a large box full of goodies on my doorstep within a week of the order being placed. While I knew I would be receiving nine four-foot shop lights, I had no idea that they were also including about two dozen LED shop light retrofit kits. I'm going to find a few unique projects to use these retrofit kits in, as well as a couple signs that I'm going to make for American Green Lights. So, as you can see, American Green Lights has sponsored me with nine of their four-foot LED energy-efficient shop lights. These are uh, 24 and 48 watt variants of the product, and all of them are either, they're all 6,000 K uh, in color temperature, which makes them almost exactly daylight. Um, I requested daylight because that's usually what I film all my other stuff at, and that's what I shoot my photography stuff at um, when I'm using uh, hot lights. So let's take a moment and talk about their product. Um, so. This is basically the lighting that does all the work. Um, you can see there's two rigid LED strips here. They're soldered together in two foot sections. This happens to be a 48 watt unit and it's gonna produce a lot of light. So you can see it looks kind of like a normal shop light. I'm told this reflector greatly helps disperse the light around the room. So that's cool. Um, if you're wondering, it does kind of assemble like a traditional shop light. As you can see, there is a little ballast box that goes on top. And in the middle, while it looks like a ballast, it's actually just a uh, 30 to 40 volt LED driver. Um, this hooks up the mains power over on this side. There's a green, white, and black wire. And then the low voltage comes out on this side to power the LEDs. Um, they include all the installation hardware you'll need and a handy dandy instruction guide. And later on, I'm gonna show you how to install these step-by-step -step into your shop. Before we get started with the lighting install, I want to thank American Green Lights for their support of the Maker's Workbench. This sponsorship's allowed us to get the lighting in our shop about six weeks early. Um, I wouldn't have been able to afford LED lighting without them, so big props to them. Hit the link below to visit their website, and in the description below, you can find their Facebook page and a couple other things. So, you know, go give them a like, let them know how much you appreciate them supporting us, and let's get on with installing the lights. One of the biggest benefits I found by contacting a lighting company about my lighting needs is their expertise. I worked with Mr. Jim Uno at American Green Lights on this project, and he worked up a comprehensive lighting plan based on my workshop's layout and what I would be doing in the shop. As you can see, a technical drawing was made of the workshop, which was then used to create several different 3D renderings. With each rendering, a subsequent heat map was generated that was able to accurately show just how much light would be projected from each Performalux shop light. This allowed the placement of lights to be changed so that optimum coverage could be achieved. This was important to me as I like a lot of light when I work, and since I'll be using the workshop for video production, having a lot of even bright light at the right color temperature is very important. 
I did have to make a few small changes to the lighting plan due to me overlooking the garage door chain track that runs about halfway down my garage's ceiling. In the end, I think this worked out in my favor as the new layout works perfectly for the double assembly table design I decided on using after the original plan was made. So let's take a moment and look at the new layout and the order I chose to wire the lights in. Starting at the top left of the layout, this big rectangle is actually the back of a fireplace that is located in our great room. Moving right, the small square is a 4 foot by 4 foot table for my x carb with a 2 foot by 4 foot workbench to its right. Moving down the right hand wall is another 2 foot by 4 foot workbench at which is immediately followed by my 6 inch Rockwell Delta joiner. Moving to the middle of the workshop, you see two large assembly tables that mate together to form an 8 foot by 8 foot work area. I plan on removing assembly table number 2 later down the road when I get a cabinet saw with expansion wings. Now over to the bottom left corner you will see my mechanical toolbox and directly above it is the chop saw station. This layout does leave a small unused area in the bottom right hand corner of the workshop and I plan on using that space for shelf storage in the future. And while none of this is built yet, this is the most efficient layout that I could come up with for the amount of space that I have to work with. So let's move on and take a look at how I have the lighting laid out. Starting at the first assembly table, light 1 is placed directly over the center of the table. I chose this location for light 1 because this is where the existing light fixture was. Moving to the left, light 2 is placed over the right side of the chop saw table with light 3 being spaced about 18 inches to the left of it. Lights 4 and 5 are located in the middle of the workshop directly over assembly table 2. I had to place these lights in this orientation due to my garage door's chain track being in the way. Light 6 is directly above my joiner while light 7 is placed over the middle of workbench 2. Light 8 is positioned just to the right of the middle of workbench 1 while light 9 is a little off center of the x carb table. As I mentioned earlier, this plan is very close to the original plan that American Green Life supplied. While I didn't want to waver from their original design too much, with the garage door chain track being in the way and my decision to add a second assembly table, it actually worked out just great. Okay, enough with these technical details. Let's move on and get these lights installed. Since I'm installing these shop lights and not retrofitting existing lights, there are a few tools and materials that I'll need to complete the job. A roll of 14-2 Romex interior wire. A drill and a driver. You could do this with just a drill, but I'm using both to speed up the install process. A tape measure. I found that a good tape measure with a magnetic end helps with aligning the lights to each other. Some screws to mount the lights with. Each light comes with its own mounting hardware, but I chose to use some longer drywall screws to accommodate the wall anchors that I'll be using. Some electrical panel grommets. The one seen here did not work, and I wound up using the one that um, comes pre-installed on the end of each light, and it worked out just fine. A drill bit sized correctly for the wall anchors that will be used. This is important because if you use a drill bit that is too large, the wall anchors will not be able to properly grip the drywall. Wall anchors. I chose to actually use some longer blue anchors over the red ones that you see here because the blue ones expand more at the top, which gives me a little more holding power. Not pictured is a 1 inch spade bit that will be used to drill through the ceiling into the attic that will allow you to pass the wires through to the light. Also not pictured are a pair of wire cutters, wire strippers, and wire nut. The first step installing the lights is marking their location. I knew I wanted the lights 24 inches off the wall so I used a sharpie to mark 24 inches on two sides. Then used the light fixtures to mark the mounting holes. Once marked I've removed the fixture and then rechecked my measurements. This process would have been a lot easier if I would have had a second pair of hands to help me hold the fixture to the ceiling. On subsequent lights, I simply measured for the mounting hole on one side, then installed a wall anchor and screwed the light into place. This held the light up on one side and made it easier for me to mark the second hole. Note that I also marked for the knockout hole that the wire will feed through. With the hole positions marked, I started by drilling out the hole for the wiring to pass through using a 1 inch spade bit. This is a very dusty process, so if you attempt this at home, don't be an idiot like I am and wear a pair of safety goggles. Now we need to drill the holes for the screws. Getting these holes positioned and sized correctly is very important, so remember to remeasure and use the correct size bit for the style of wall anchors you are using. Now push the wall anchor into the hole and give it a few taps with a hammer to ensure that it's fully seated. Now it's time to mount the light. Use the drywall screws to secure it to the wall anchors and then take care not to over tighten the screws. Over tightening will cause the wall anchor to spin boring its hole out even larger, which reduces its holding power in the drywall. With the driver box housing mounted we can begin wiring things up. I did not shoot any footage of myself running the wires because it was quite boring to be honest. Since I was working by myself, to make things easier, I pre-cut all the wire by measuring from point to point and then adding two feet. I then fed each length of wire through its respective light's hole. 
When all the wires were through the holes, I climbed into the attic and ran the other end down through the next light in the chain's hole. Wiring each light is simple and all you need to do is connect the black power wire to the black wire on the driver box. Then connect the white neutral wire to the white wire on the driver. Then connect the common wire to the green wire on the driver. Now connect the LED panel to the driver using the gray wires on the other side of the light. All you have to do is connect the gray wires together using the pre-installed connectors. These connectors are polarized so installing them backwards is not an easy thing to do. Finishing up, all you have left to do is screw the LED panel to the driver housing box and then repeat the process for each light. If you have a pre-existing switched light in your garage, then you can simply tap into its power source to allow the existing switch to turn on the new shop lights. If you do not have an existing switch, I recommend calling a licensed electrician to tackle that project for you. I had an existing light, so I simply daisy chained all of my lights together and ran light number one's power wire to the existing light's power source. Remember, if you're installing these lights yourself, be sure to turn off the circuit breaker that controls the existing light circuit. Now it's time to turn on the breaker and flip the switch to see if we have light. It works! And man is it bright. So as you can see, the lighting in here is much better. It's very even, there's no real shadows being cast anywhere. And all in all, I just can't be more pleased with the way this turned out. The install took me a couple days overall, but you could easily do this in a weekend in your own shop. Um, I've had some questions from people that I've told about this, wondering if the LEDs are going to cause flickering when I'm shooting video. And that's not really a problem because they feature constant current LED drivers inside them. And at the same time, I only shoot at 30 frames per second. So any flickering that might occur would be just kind of blurred out by, you know, the slower frame rate. And that's because here in the US, um, the mains power is at 60 hertz. And if you shoot at 60 frames per second, you will see LEDs with cheaper drivers flicker. This also happens with, uh, with the, uh, some of the cheaper magnetic ballasted uh, fluorescent shop lights. And uh, with these LEDs, that's just not a problem. So to wrap things up, I cannot thank American Green Lights enough. Their support of what I do here at the Maker's Workbench and getting this shop set up is just phenomenal. Um, Everything about this project went smoothly except for one or two little issues I had with like grommets and stuff like that for the knockout holes. As you might have noticed, I left out some parts of the install in the wiring portion and that's mainly because unless you really know what you're doing with electrical wiring or uh, you have a license or the guidance of a licensed professional, you really should not mess with the mains wiring in your home. Um, it could potentially burn things down or cause a short that damages other parts of your house. So. Unless you know what you're doing, don't attempt to do that. And it could be illegal depending on the area you live in and your local inspection codes. Well, that's gonna wrap up this video. Tune in next Friday where I build some assembly tables and some workbenches for the workshop and get things organized a little better. Until then, hack the world and make awesome. <laughs>